All right, third problem from the Fall 16 Math 111 final exam. Uh, if you are taking a Math 111 class with me, make sure you can do this problem. You're going to be asked to do exactly this. Uh, ask this, you go back in all the tests, you're pretty much asked for the exact same thing on every test. It's the same steps. It's not easy, but it's very predictable. Expect to see this. First thing you want to do is write F in vertex form. What I mean by that is rewrite this so that it looks like a bunch of function transformations of the graph y equals x squared. Specifically, complete the square on this mess so that you only write the letter x one time for this function. And the way I showed you guys how to do this is first off, you're going to be doing a lot of algebra. And it's weird to do algebra with an f of x. So I like to change the f of x just into the letter y. And that's just for kind of aesthetics. That's just to make it look better when you're going through and doing your algebra. If you want to leave this as an f of x, it's totally fine. I don't care. Uh, now I want to complete the square. Well, the way we learned how to complete the square is we needed the leading coefficient to be a 1. It's not, it's a 2. And we needed the x squared and the x terms to be all by themselves. They're not. There's this 5 here. So what I'm going to do is first subtract 5 from both sides of the equation so that I get y minus 5 equals 2x squared minus 8x. And then I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 2. So I get y minus 5 over 2 equals x squared minus 4x. Note that when I divided the right-hand side of the equation by 2, I had to divide both of the coefficients by 2. Get here. Now I want to complete the square. In this specific problem, this works out pretty nicely. Don't assume yours will work, work out nicely. Theirs works out nicely that this is an even number right here. But that's not always the case. If this were an odd number, make sure you can solve this problem. Make sure you understand how to do this. Fractions will be involved. In this case, because it's even, it's a little bit easier. There's a number I want to add to both sides of the equation to make a perfect square on the right-hand side. In this case, that number is the number 4. I add 4 to both sides of the equation. Why 4? Hang on a minute. Let me finish writing. This 4 comes from half of the linear coefficient, negative 4 in this case, squared. So half of negative 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. You'll do that on whatever your linear coefficient is. So if this is an odd number and you cut it in half, you're going to get a fraction. That's what I was talking about a minute ago. Make sure you can deal with that. What you now have is a perfect square on the right-hand side of the equation. I'm going to leave the left-hand side alone. Yeah, you could get a common denominator. You could rewrite this if you felt like it, but I don't bother. I don't think it makes things any easier. What I instead do is just complete the square on the right here. This is x minus 2 squared. How do you know this is x minus 2 squared? Well, you could foil this out and make sure you'd re regain this answer over here. Um, but maybe easier, rather than checking your answer, is to understand how to get your answer in the first place. And this will always be x plus half of this linear co coefficient squared. So half of this linear coefficient is negative 2. Here's the x plus negative 2. And don't forget that whole thing has to be squared. If you're not sure about that, foil that out. Make sure you get back up here. So now I'm done, essentially. Well, kind of. Um, I have written this so that the letter x only occurs one time. I've completed the square. Done with the hard part. Um, but I want to write this in function notation. It's not function notation. To be in function notation, i got to get the y all by itself. So undo all those steps you did to solve for this y. Subtract 4 from both sides of the equation. Multiply both sides of the equation by 2. Note that when you're multiplying the right-hand side of the equation by 2, you have to hit both of these terms, this one, and this one. Um, but you can't take the 2 and distribute it into these parentheses because the parentheses, what's in there is squared, and 2 is not squared. So you write it like this. Finally, add 5 to both sides of the equation, and you get y equals 2 times x minus 2 squared minus 3. Probably be fine with that answer. I can't imagine I'd be picky enough to care that you wrote your answer like this. But technically, y is something that we created. Um, y wasn't in the original problem. I created it so that I could do algebra easier. It's not a bad idea to rewrite this as f of x equals... 2 times x minus 2 squared minus 3. This is the vertex form of this function. Now that we have it in its vertex form, we can answer some of these questions below. Specifically, uh, part C, part D, and even E will be a little bit easier now that we have this vertex form. B, we can get it from either form. B is asking me to determine the y-intercept of the graph. Well, the y-intercept is always just the height of the graph when the x value equals 0, so I just need to figure out f of 0. Change all these x's into zeros and see what you get. Or you can go back to this form and change these x's into zeros and see what you get. It's easier over here, but either way you'll get the same answer. Either way you'll get the number 5. So the y-intercept happens at a height of 5. Um, you could also write this as 0, 5, 
or you could write this at y equals 5. I don't care how you write this. Just make it clear that you understand that the y-intercept is at 5. C, using your answer to part A, describe in words the transformations necessary to obtain the graph of f from the standard parabola y equals x squared. Make sure to specify the order that you apply these transformations if it's relevant. Yeah, it's relevant. Um, there's three transformations going on here. There are two vertical transformations. First, I want to apply the vertical transformation that corresponds with this two, because for vertical transformations, I do the multiplication first. So first, I want to multiply the y values by two. And again, that's for this two right here. Then I want to subtract three from the y values. Um, and as we talked about in class, let me write this, hang on. Um, you can also describe these as I'm going to stretch my graph vertically by a factor of two and I'm gonna shift my graph down by three units. I think it's easier to use words like multiply, subtract, add, that kind of stuff, but it's up to you. Um, there's also a horizontal transformation going on and I'm gonna label this with a one, not with a three, because it turns out that the order you apply your horizontals versus your verticals makes no difference. It's just if you have more than one of a given type, the order that you apply those within that type is important. So for horizontals, I only have one. It corresponds with this negative two. Um, you think that you subtract two from the x values, but you don't because everything with horizontals is backwards. You're actually going to add two to the x values. So I'm going to add two, or you could write subtract negative two. Add two maybe to the x values. Sure. Um, and those are the transformations that you apply. And I don't know, maybe you write it a little bit more. I don't care how you write it. Make sure that you understand this and we'll be good. Part D, determine the location of the vertex of f. Well, you can get that from these transformations if you notice that the vertex of y equals x squared starts out at 0, 0. So this first transformation won't do anything because the old y value is 0. You multiply by 2, it's still 0. So really, it's just these two transformations right here. I start out at 0, 0. This subtracts 3 from my y values, so the new y coordinate will be negative 3. This adds 2 to my x values. The new x coordinate will be positive 2. The vertex is at 2, negative 3. Or if you want the opposite of this number, comma, this number. 2, negative 3. Determine the x-intercepts of f. The x-intercepts happen. There are x values that make the height equal 0. So you take your function and set it equal to 0. You could take this and set it equal to 0. Um, take you a while, but you could do it. But it's easier to take this and set it equal to zero. Because if you took this and set it equal to zero, you'd have three options. You could try to factor. It turns out it won't work in this case. You can complete the square. You can use the quadratic formula. Without a calculator, the quadratic formula is kind of annoying, so you might choose to complete the square. If you're going to complete the square anyways, why redo it? You already did all this work completing the square to get to here. Why not take this form, 2 times x minus 2 squared minus 3. Make sure I copied that down right. I'm um, going to set that equal to 0. I could solve this for x. I'd add 3 to both sides of the equation. I'd divide both sides of the equation by 2. i take the square root of both sides of the equation. When you take the square root of both sides of an equation, you got to remember to put in that plus or minus. Uh, and then finally, I would add 2 to both sides of the equation. I would get x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of three halves. Uh, all right, I guess I'll call that good.